Last week we did a little impromptu getting started with Capture One video, just, just out of the blue. Now if you haven't seen it, I'll pop a link down in the description so you can get started with Capture One because today we're diving back in. We're gonna be talking about color grading. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. Now, this week, we're diving back into Capture One. You can check out our full Getting Started with Capture One video. I'll pop a link down in the description so you can check that out. But we're diving back in. We're talking all about color grading. There's actually loads of ways you can affect the color in your, in your photo. There's a few different tools, and it actually gets really deep and really, really quite powerful within the program. So we're gonna dive in, I've got a photo here. Let's just get into it. So I've got this photo of the pier, it was taken at sunset. Now before we get into the color grading and actually affecting the color, there's a few things I just wanna sort out, which is mainly the exposure. It's a little bit underexposed, and I wanna just boost the shadows so we can see exactly what we're doing. Now we might then come back to the exposure by the end of the video, because we might decide that we wanna change that up again. But for now, let's just, uh, Let's just fix this a little bit. So first things first, we've got our menus over here on the left, our kind of develop menus, if you wanna talk about kind of similarities to Lightroom. We've got our develop kind of stuff over on the left here. We've got these little sub menus at the top. The one we're gonna start with here is exposure, which gives this little symbol of kind of like a histogram. Now we're gonna come down here to the actual exposure kind of sliders, and I just wanna boost the actual exposure. I wanna boost the contrast a little bit. I'm going to leave the brightness and saturation alone, and I'm going to bring the the, uh, the actual highlights down, so we keep that 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 detail in the sky, and I'm going to boost the shadows a little bit of, as well. Now, again, we might come back to it. We might come back and actually darken the shadows a little bit, or darken everything maybe. But for now, I want to see exactly what we're working with, so that we can actually color this the way we want it to be. And as you can see straight away, this looks a little bit blue. It looks very cool. The color temperature. And uh, we're probably gonna warm that up. So that's one of the big ways, of course, that we can affect color. So let's come up here to the top of the exposure menu where we've got white balance. And we can just we can just bring that Kelvin up until it starts to look much, much warmer. Now, if you don't wanna do it that way, if you don't wanna just eyeball it and kind of kind of go with what feels right, you can get a good starting point by using this little eyedropper tool here to pick the white balance. Now, when you click that, it's gonna turn orange. You can then mouse over any part of the image where there is white and just left click. So these parts of the pier that should be white, let's left click there. And it's going to adjust the color temperature, the white balance, until that part of the image is actually white, so that it's not too warm or too cool. That always gives me a good starting point. You know, that's roughly what it looked like when I was there anyway. I could then warm it a little bit more. I could add some magenta or some green, but I'm gonna leave it as that for now because I think, uh, I think that looks good. Now, going forward, let's move over to the color menu so we can actually get really into the proper coloring of this photo. So up here, the, the sub menus, we've, we're on exposure at the moment. We're gonna go into color. And this is where we're really gonna get started. So you've got white balance here as well, because of course that is gonna affect the color massively. And the next thing we're gonna actually use here is the color editor. Now the color editor is a little bit like the HSL tab in Lightroom. It allows you to affect different colors with hue, saturation, and lightness as well. So you can affect kind of how, what the exact color is, the saturation of them, how, how, how rich they are, and then of course light and dark within that color. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green. Let's start off with, with orange here. I'm gonna bring that hue down a little bit just to kind of richen the orange up, and I'm definitely gonna pop the saturation. Lightness I'm gonna leave alone. Yellow, I'm gonna do the same sort of thing, just a tiny bit down towards the oranges and boost the saturation. I wanna keep, mostly keep the gold and kind of tones though. Green, there's nothing really there, so aqua I'm gonna come over, just bring it towards the blues, boost the saturation a little bit, and the blues just a little bit sort of towards the aquas boost the saturation a little bit. And that's basically the color editor. A lot like HSL, a lot like how you would work with that in Lightroom. It allows you to finesse the little hues and things like that, the different colors in your photo. But there is more to it. It does go a lot deeper. So we've been working with it in the basic mode here. But there is, of course, as you can see, the advanced mode right next to it. So let's left click that. And immediately the menu changes. Now there's a little uh, pick color correction kind of eyedropper tool here. Let's left click that. That's gonna make it turn orange. And we can come over here to the photo and we can select any color in the photo. Now in this particular instance, a lot of this photo is orange, it's warm, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick the, uh, the cloud over here. So let's just left click there. 
And as soon as we do that, you can see this color wheel appears in the color editor, where it shows us exactly what color we've selected on the color wheel, and you can adjust things from there. So for example, I can actually click and drag how many colors within the color wheel will actually be affecting when we go in and, and alter this. I'm actually gonna press Control Z twice to just bring that back to how it was. But you can see there's sliders underneath here that we can use to affect this. So for example, the hue slider, I can affect that, that color across the whole photo, I can affect quite massively with the hue slider. Now I'm not going to do that because I like the color that they are, but I am gonna boost the saturation. It's gonna boost the saturation really of all of the clouds because they're all within that kind of color that I've just picked. Now, if I wanted to be a little bit more picky about it, I could actually reduce the color I've picked right down to just that. So you, so you now are really just picking the color that I actually literally clicked on. It's a really great way of getting really exact about your color correction. And I think that's a big part of it. Yes, you can use this for color grading and getting the exact kind of look you want to go for, but you can also use it for color correction, where you're actually just going to make sure that colors are exactly as you want them to be. You're going to be able to go in and pick very specific colors in the photo to change. Now you'll also notice that next to the advanced tab here is skin tone. And now we don't have a person in our photo, so we can't really use this one, but this would allow us to, again, use the, the eyedropper tool here to actually select the, the skin in the photo, which then tells Capture One what color the skin tone is. It'll appear right here on the, uh, on the color wheel, and we can make very subtle adjustments to it. So we can color correct, we can add or reduce the amount of magenta, the amount of yellow, things like that to really get the skin tone to be perfect. And it is such a powerful tool. It means you're protecting your skin tones. It means you're getting them to be exactly as they should be. They're not gonna be looking crazy. Really, really powerful, powerful tool, especially for portrait photography, obviously. Now, that's the color editor kind of in a nutshell. We've done a little bit with it. We haven't gone too crazy. But the next thing I wanna talk about is the color balance tool, which is just below the color editor. Now this allows you a little bit like in Lightroom where you can add a color to the shadows and a color to the highlights. This allows us to add a three-way color. So there's a few things we can do. We can, we can add master color, so we can, we can kind of add a color to the whole photo. So for example, we can really warm things up by adding a bit of orange, a bit of sort of yellow, a bit of red, bring it down to, to the blues, you know, really affect it that way. Or we can go into the three-way color where we can add a color to the shadows, a color to the midtones, and a color to the highlights. And that's the way that I like to work. So in this photo, for example, we're gonna bring the shadow color wheel. We're gonna just click and drag this circle in the middle out towards the sort of tealy blues. I quite like that. Yeah, I quite like that. Then let's bring the mid-tone, let's click and drag this little circle in the middle out towards the sort of oranges there. And the same with the highlights. I'm gonna drag that out to the oranges as well. And you can see that that has really made quite a significant difference. That's warmed up the photo, but the pier has a little bit of color contrast, whereas it's just a little bit more sort of sort of blue. Now, if you ever wanna see how the, the color balance, for example, or the color editor as one specific thing, how much it has affected the, the photo, you wanna see before and after of one specific tool like this, you can absolutely do that. You just hold Alt on your keyboard, and let's say we wanna do the color balance. We come up here to where it says Reset. We hold Alt. We left click and hold, and you can see what it looked like before the color balance, and then release to see what it looks like afterwards. So you can see before was this, and after is this. So we've really warmed that up, but there's a little bit of color contrast with the pier and the and the sky now. If you want to see the entire picture before and after, you can do the same sort of thing. Hold Alt, and then come up to the top here, where it says Reset, right at the top left. Left click and hold, and that will show you the before of the whole picture, and then release to see the after. So that's where we're at now. Now the next thing we're gonna to use to color the photo is actually back in the exposure tab. And we're gonna talk about levels and curves. And for me, the curves adjustment in Capture One is superb. It is so powerful. It just feels like it works on a different level to other programs that I've used. It, it, just, uh, it, just, it just adds a lot. It's, it's perfectly reasonable to be very subtle with it because obviously it can be quite powerful and quite overwhelming. But we're, we're gonna dive into it a little bit. But before we do that, I wanna play around a little bit with the exposure of the photo because I think it's starting to look a little bit bright. So we're actually gonna come back to the exposure tab up here in the top left. 
when they come down to the levels adjustment. Now you could use this for color as well, but I'm really just gonna use it for the overall exposure. I'm gonna bring the mid-tones kind of value here. I'm gonna bring it over to the right, which is gonna darken everything a little bit. I think that actually looks really quite nice. I'm gonna bring this, this kind of shadows, the, the, the blacks value right over and the left. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit to, to really crush those blacks. You know, get a very rich look to things. And then similarly, over here on the right, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. Which is actually gonna just add a bit of contrast by brightening the sky. Now next, we're gonna come down to the curves adjustment, where we've got the ability to use it as an RGB curve, where we can affect basically the actual exposure values of things like midtones, highlights, and shadows, which we'll go over. And then of course, we can affect individual color channels, so red, green, and blue. Let's start off with RGB. Now, if you're not familiar with the curves adjustment, it allows you to plot points on this kind of this graph here, and then adjust it from there. So let's start off by plotting three points. Let's, plot one in the middle of the line there. So we're trying to add them to these kind of intersections here. Let's plot one right here, which is gonna give you kind of the uh, the highlights area of the image. And let's plot one right here, which is gonna give you kind of the shadows area of the image. Now, a generally a quite, a, quite a, a normal thing that people do with a curves adjustment is with the shadows point here, you can then left click and drag that around. Now, as you see, as I move that around, that's gonna go crazy. So you wanna be really quite subtle with this but you might wanna bring the shadows down a touch, just a touch. And then maybe up here at the highlights, just push those up a little bit. That's generally a great way of creating a bit of contrast. It's called an S curve, because it kind of snakes a little bit. I mean, this one's very subtle, but uh, you can see it's, it's added kind of a bit of contrast there with the brightness of the sky and then the pier. I think that looks quite nice, but then let's dive into the individual color channels. now. This is a crazy way of doing so much to your image. I say crazy way, it's just a very, very powerful way of, uh, of coloring your image. And it's all about what you add and take away. So if you take away some of the, the red and the green, for example, from the shadows, you're gonna be left with more blue in the shadows. So the blue is gonna be emphasized. Similarly, if you do the opposite, the green and the blue from the highlights, you're gonna be left with more red in the highlights. So let's have a look at this quickly. So let's take away some of the red and the green from the shadows. Now let's plot three points for the red, the green, and the blue. Um, I'm gonna go back to the red here. I'm gonna pull that down a tiny bit in the shadows. I'm gonna come over to the green. I'm gonna do a similar sort of thing. And you can see as I do that, the actual color of the shadows is changing a lot. We've now got much more blue in the shadows, which means the pier has this kind of blue look to it. We could come over to the greens, we could pull them down in the highlights as well. Although you can see in the histogram behind, there's not really much green in the highlights anyway, so it's not gonna make that much of a difference. Same with the blue, there's just not that much blue in the highlights. So pulling it down in the highlights isn't gonna make a huge amount of difference. But even just with these very, very subtle changes we've made, if I hold Alt and then left click and hold on the reset button, you can see how much of a difference it has actually made to the image. Actually really quite significant. Even though it looks almost like nothing on the graph, it's made a huge difference overall. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, this is great. I, I, I like the look of this, but I think we've gone a bit too far with things. Well, that's no worries. We can actually come back up here to the saturation. Maybe pull that down just a touch to something like minus, minus 10, minus eight. And we can actually bring the brightness up a little bit as well. And one final thing that I'd like to do to the image as well, which is uh, something nice about, uh, about Capture One, is we can add a new layer, and we can bring a gradient mask in from the right. So let's add a new layer. So up at the top of either the exposure menu or the color menu, we can add a new layer by pressing this little plus icon here that adds layer one. So we can then make some adjustments to the layer one. So let's bring the exposure up a little bit. Uh, and let's bring the uh, the color temperature up a little bit as well. Let's make that really quite quite golden. And you might think, well, nothing's absolutely nothing is happening. That's no worries. We just haven't told Capture One where this layer is going to be applied to on the image. We haven't selected any mask for it to actually be applied to. So let's go ahead and use the gradient mask here. Let's left click that and just drag it in from the top right. If you've used Lightroom at all, you'll probably be somewhat familiar with this. And that's kind of giving the uh, the look of kind of sunlight coming in from the top right. 
Now, I really like that. You can then with the layers, you can adjust opacity and things like that. And actually, if I was doing this properly, and, and uh, this is what we'll talk about in the next video, I might actually have used some of these different settings on different layers. So for example, the curves adjustment, I might have put on a different layout so I could then reduce the opacity later if I thought it was too much. Similar with uh, with things like color balance and, and the uh, the color editor as well. I might have done them on different layers so I can come back to them really easily going forward. Uh, but we'll talk about that in the next video. I think this looks really good. I think it, I think it shows how powerful Capture One can be. You know, this is probably this is probably gone a little bit over the top in terms of coloring. But I think, it, I think it proves the point of how much you can do. And this, this particular photo is very kind of standard in terms of what you can do because it's very orange, it's very warm, it's very golden. But if you had a photo with lots of different colors, you know, a portrait maybe with a very colorful background, there is no real limit to how much you could color grade and get the exact look you want to go for. You know, we didn't even play around with the idea of kind of uh, muting out certain colors like sometimes you might want to mute out the blues and just have the oranges in there but that can look amazing there's all kinds of things you can do to uh, desaturate certain colors boost others loads and loads of stuff now i'll pop a link to the actual capture one software down in the description so you can check it out for yourself i think it's i think it's definitely worth having a look at especially if you're you know if you're thinking about switching from lightroom if you don't want to pay the subscription fee for lightroom i think capture one is a great alternative i love using it there's something about it that just feels more natural. The end result looks kind of more natural. Uh, yeah, big, big, big fan. I'll also pop a full list of all the kit used for the photos down in the description so you can check that out for yourself as well. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video about Capture One, pop it down in the comments and we'll do our best to accommodate that. I've got some ideas. We're gonna talk about working with layers. We're gonna talk about using the different masks and stuff like that. But anything else you want to see, absolutely pop it down there because we'll do our best to accommodate. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.